So here's all the parts needed for my rebuild on my 2004 Yamaha Banshee. I just got the cylinders back from CSA Performance. They bored them uh, 30 thousandths over. There's a view of what it looks like. Looks like a pretty good job to me, but I'm not an engine expert. Uh, I'm going to wash these uh, with Dawn dish soap and water and a sponge to get all the metal shavings out and all the grease out and all that and then I'm going to dry them real good. Got the cylinders washed, now I'm going to dry them off before they start rusting. You want to use carb cleaner and clean up all of the surfaces wherever a gasket or two pieces of metal or anything like that will touch. Get all the corrosion and oxidation and um, dirt and everything like that, all the rust, clean up all the threads everything like that so you get a good seal when you put the top end back together. After you clean up the surface of where the cylinders and the gaskets are going to hit, you're going to want to clean up the connecting rods. Next I'm going to install the pistons. The piston just slides onto the connecting rod. The two holes is going to f are going to face backwards. And then there's also arrow on the top to show you the direction the air and fuel should be flowing. Everything that you install as far as components that go inside the engine you're going to want to make sure you put a light coat of grease on them. So that's going to include the wrist pin bearing, the wrist pin, uh, these circle clips, the piston rings, and then the piston itself, as well as the connecting rods. Everything is going to want to have a light coat of uh, two-stroke oil on it, whatever kind of oil you're going to use to run the engine on. When you install the piston rings onto the piston, there's these two holding pins that are supposed to hold the piston or the piston rings in place. There's one right here and one right here. So when you put the piston rings on, make sure that the part that's open on the ring goes over those two holding pins. Also on the piston rings themselves, there is markings, there's a name right there, it says N50, that's supposed to face upwards on the piston. We got that lower piston ring installed, it's going to want to go right over that holding pin there. When you squeeze the piston ring together it should go right over that pin, just like that. And then same thing on the top one with that pin right there. Next I'm going to install one of these clips on the piston so I just have to slide the wrist pin bearing through the uh, or the wrist pin through the wrist pin bearing. And so I'm going to install the clip on what would be the inside of the piston. I've got that clip installed. The easiest way to do it is to just bend it a little, not so that it's permanently bent, but just enough to get it in there, and then stick the slide pin in from the other side to level it out, and it should click right into place. Should just take a, a couple seconds to do. Now install the wrist pin bearing into the connecting rod, slide the piston over, and then install the slide pin. Now that you've got that bottom part installed, double check and uh, make sure that your arrow is facing forward and that you have the two holes in the back before you install that last clip to hold that slide pin in place. Now you've got that clip installed that side is done for now and do the same thing on the other side. Now I'm going to put a thin coating of oil on the inside of the cylinder. Um, make sure that it was completely dried before you install it. If you have an air compressor, blow it out with an air compressor. Then put a thin coating of oil basically on everything that's going to be on the inside of the engine. I do even a little bit on the intake and a little bit on the exhaust just to be sure. Now triple check that you have those clips in place that the piston rings are in place and marked where they should be and set up the way they should be. Those ones aren't, I still have to align them. Make sure the inside of your cylinder is greased and then go ahead and slide the two together. You're going to have to compress those piston rings on top of those holding pins at the same time that you slide the cylinder on so you might want some help when you do this part. I'm also going to put some anti-seize on all of these bolts that stick out. That's the cylinder freshly set on there. I guess the torque spec for these uh, nuts right here is 20 foot-pounds. It's a 12 millimeter nut and I'm going to use a swivel adapter so that I can get the torque spec right. Pretty sure the swivel adapter absorbs some of the 
weight on the torque wrench so you want to go a little higher than that I think I'm going to do about 25 or 30 foot pounds um, you're going to want to do I'm going to do it in increments I'm going to do 10 foot pounds here 10 foot pounds on the back corner 10 foot pounds over here and then 10 over here and then tighten it to 20 and then tighten it to 30 just to make sure that the cylinder goes on there as evenly as possible Now all eight of those bolts for the cylinders are torqued down to what should be 20 foot-pounds but I had to set the wrench to 30 because I had to use that swivel adapter on a lot. For those two middle bolts down by the exhaust, one of these wrenches worth work perfect. It's a 12 millimeter. Anything else really is going to be difficult to get in there. You can't really get in there with a socket or anything. So get those tightened down. With the head gasket, you're going to want to put the up right there at the bottom facing up so this is the way it's going to be installed right like this now that I have the head gasket set on there I'm going to install the head itself the bolt order is on there there's one two three four five six seven eight nine and 10. Those are all 10 bolts. Once again I'm going to torque them down to 10 foot-pounds and then 20 foot-pounds is what the manual is saying. I spray a little bit of chain wax on my finger and then go around the inside of this coolant hose and then same with that one just to get them to slide on a little bit easier. Now I'm going to go through and torque all the head bolts in the order that it shows on the head to do them. I'm going to do them all down to 10 foot-pounds and then down to 20 foot-pounds with my torque wrench 12 millimeter, millimeter socket. The gap for these spark plugs, the BR8ES spark plugs by NGK is going to be 0.7 to 0.8. We put it right in the middle of that. Uh, double check your gaps. Uh, I'm going to install a little anaces on these and then we'll torque down the spark plug. I'm going to spray out the two coils with some electrical cleaner. Torque spec for the spark plug is going to be 20 foot-pounds. You have that washer on there, so it's going to take a little bit of effort to get them in. There we go. Next, install your three co coolant hoses that connect to the head one in the front which goes up to the top of the radiator this one which goes down to the water pump and then this one which also goes up to the top of the radiator install all three of those and tighten them down now I'm going to install the reed cages there's two of them one for each cylinder one for each carb it's going to go gasket reed cage and then the rubber piece that goes in the back with the crossover tube. These are going to be the eight bolts that are used to install the reed cages. For those eight bolts, it's a five millimeter Allen key wrench. Uh, I just tighten them down as hard as I could with it like this, and then give it another quarter turn with it like that, and uh, works out well. You just need to tighten it enough to hold the water out. Now that you've got the Reed valves installed, you're going to want to install the carburetor. Um, little part goes towards the front, big part goes towards the back, choke goes on the left hand side. Really pretty simple. Uh, the more you take your carb out and put it back in, the easier it is to do because this rubber wears out a little bit. I've taken mine out a whole lot, so it should be pretty easy to pop in there. The carb comes out a lot easier if you pop the boot off, then put the front end of the carb in, then slide the boot in, and then put that over each end. Now you're going to want to install your fuel lines and adjust your carbs to make sure that they're adjusted the same if you know where they need to be. And then don't forget your choke tube install which goes from right here to right there. Also you're going to want to make sure all your wires are grouped together. 
Uh, zip tie them if you want them to look all neat. Uh, and they're going to run in between the carburetors. So make sure you install those before you install that second carb. Now you need to reconnect all your coolant hoses. There's one here which feeds up through the middle of the carbs up to the top and tees off right there. Reconnect this one which goes from the bottom of the radiator to the water pump right here. It's going to go on the inside of the frame. And go through and double check your uh, reserve hoses which are right here. There's two of them that run from the radiator all the way back to your, your overflow. And then reinstall the cover and top it off with coolant. Next go ahead and top off the radiator and the overflow reservoir in the back which is right there behind the air box. Next we reinstalled the exhaust and then we're going to put on the gas tank and see if it will fire up. On the exhaust make sure you include this th the three springs, the one on each header on the front and then the one that goes across the bottom if your setup is still stock.